Welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how we can use Entity Framework Core 5 in Blazor Server. To do this, we first have to install three NuGet packages. The first one is the package with all the base clauses in it, like DB context. The second one here is the SQL Server one, because we are going to use Microsoft SQL Server as our database and the last one is the tools so that we can add and update our database from the package manager console. Now let's just create our entity and then the context. For this application I will create a little crawl application with page visits, so whenever we visit the page, a new page visit is getting created in the database. It will have a key of type GUID and only one other property, which is the time of the visit. And this property is of type date time. Now in here, I'm going to create also the context, call it visit context. Here we are inheriting or extending, however you want to call it, the DB context base class. You are only going to define a constructor. This constructor is not parameterless. We will define one parameter of type DB context options. And we will pass the value in the constructor of the DB context, so the base constructor. Now let's go into our startup file. Uh, startup clause. Why have I specified explicitly in the title we are going to use Entity Framework Core 5? Because this allows us to do something. Here we can add a DB context factory to the service collection. So I start typing add DB context. Now here I see four options. You may ask yourself what is the difference between the DB context pool or the add pooled DB context and the two other ones. If we use a pool, then we have, as the name says, a pool of DB contexts, meaning at any time during the life cycle of our applications, they are already created DB contexts around. Now, maybe this uh, sounds very Good, but Microsoft is saying that if you don't have tested and you don't know that using a pooled version is better for you, then just stick to the normal one. So in special cases, maybe you have a performance gain, but for most applications, just use the normal ones, not the pooled ones, because the creation of a DB context is very fast. So in here, it's a generic method. We have to pass the type of our context. And in here, we have to at least call one method on this object of type DB context options builder. The method is called use SQL server to specify which database we are going to use. In here, I'm going to pass the connection string to the database. The name of the database Blazor EF Core 5. So that's that. Now, here in the index, whenever this component is getting loaded, we want to create a new entity. Therefore, I have to inject a type of type IDB context factory. Now we pass in visit context as a generic parameter, and I just call it context factory. here in the initialized async method. First, we are going to create a new visit context by invoking the create DB context method on the context factory. And then over this visit context, as you would do in any version of entity framework core, we can just I completely, okay, I've completely forgot one thing here in the, in our visit context, 
where is it here? So here I forgot to also specify a DB set. And I call it page visits. But because I haven't created a migration yet, I don't have to recreate a migration. And I also don't have to update the database because, of course, I haven't even created a database. So here I can just add a new page visit. Now the ID will be automatically set by Entity Framework Core. Visit of time, I set it to daytime now. Now also one very important thing, because we are using the IDB context factory, we have to dispose the visit context. In C Sharp 8, I think there, is a, there was a new feature which you can use the using statement as such, so you don't have to enclose everything in curly brackets. Whenever the code will arrive here at the end of the enclosing curly brackets, then the object will be disposed automatically. So now in here we are adding a page visit. Somewhere, of course, I want to display them too. That's going to happen here in the fetch data component. Here again, going to inject IDB context factory visit context. Uh, again, I'm going to call it context factory. Now, instead of a array of type weather forecast, we are going to create an array of type page visit, going to rename it to page visits. Here, the initialized async method, we will also slightly change page visits equals context factory, create DB context. And I just, so using visit context, so, and over this visit context, we can retrieve the page visits. You may ask yourself, why haven't we here the asynchronous methods too? Because I haven't included the namespace for Entity Framework Core. I do this by including Microsoft Entity Framework Core. And now IntelliSense will also give us the possibility to call the asynchronous methods, which I'm going to do. So I just have to await it. Now, of, oh yeah, of course, it doesn't know about the forecasts. So let's just quickly rename it page visits, page visits. Here we are going to display the ID and here we are going to display the date, but somewhere I also want to show you how we can update an entity, so this is going to happen here. Input type date, and we will just bind it to visit uh, visit of time. Have I named it visit of time? Time of visit. Again, because I haven't created a migration yet, I can just rename rename the properties, so time of visit. Okay, yeah, now I'm in the index, okay. And then here in the fetch data, time of visit. Now I just say bind event on input, otherwise the element has to lose focus so that changes are made. Okay, and now we leave it, we leave the row number to four. In here, I'm going to create a button. Which has the clause success. And whenever we are going to click this button, we are just updating it. And here in the last, oh no, I've, I've made a misspelling. We are, we have four columns. And here in the last column, I'm going to create a 
red button, which is here to delete the entity. So I have to define these two methods here. First one is called update. It will expect a page visit as an input. Now in here it's again the same the same game as before. First we have to create our visit context by using the create db context method and then I'm going to get the entry and set its state to entity state modified. Then I'm going to await the save changes async method. And then I also want the UI to be immediately updated. So I'm just going to re, uh, re query let's say, all the page visits. And I call status change because we are in an asynchronous method. Now I just quickly copy this code here, rename update to delete. Again, we are expecting a page visit as a parameter or as an argument. We have defined page visit as a parameter and then expect it as an argument. Again, we are going to create a new visit context. Now this time, because we have named the method delete, we want to delete it. So I'm going to call the remove method on the visit context and pass it in our visit. And then we are going to await save changes again. And again, we are going to uh, requery all the remaining entities in the, in the database and then display it on the page. So now I have just, I just have to wire up everything. So the on click method, asynchronous, await, update, then pass in the visit. And here, everything exact the same, just that we rename, or just that we call, that we invoke the delete method instead of the update method. Now here, the table headers, we are going to rename them quickly too. So first one ID, second one date. The third one will be update and the last one delete. Now, so that I just don't forget it, go into the package manager console, add our first migration, I call it initial. Here we see the migration, the primary key defined, and uh, the two the two attributes which are going to be mapped to a column. And then I'm going to create uh, I'm going to call update database so that our database is actually created in this case because we haven't created one yet. So now the application should work. Let's have a look. So the key takeaway from this video is that we now don't have to build our own factory, which is going, which we can use to create DB context for us in Blazor server. Because you may know in Blazor server, everything is a bit different with the web sockets. We don't really have the scoped lifetime here. Okay. So for some reason here in the index, we are not actually adding them. Okay, yeah, I made a, Terrible mistake, of course, I have to call save changes or save changes async in here, otherwise our changes are not getting persisted. Now we load the index component, so one entity should have been created. Fetch data, okay. Let's just go back to home. Yeah, now we see we have three entities, we have three visits, we can delete them. And then in here we can modify the visit of the, the page. Let's just refresh it to see 
Yes, it's persisted. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, yeah.